Welcome back, folks. Now, we just saw the initial demonstration of the hydropneumatic suspension mechanic that's coming with the Swedish vehicles in patch 9.17, likely around December of this year. So, the usual jumbo holiday patch like the previous years, but we're expecting a lot of stuff this year because two branches the hybrid line and the tank destroyer line with the new mechanic. So, that's pretty good. But I'll cover all the initial stats. Of the Swedish vehicles this week. So, there's going to be a lot of content and hold on to your butts. But before I start doing that, I want to do a quick overview a status quo video for World of Tanks based on the previous trends or previous patch history. How does it shape the meta and how does it shape the vehicle popularity list? And finally, we'll talk about the potential new mechanics that could be added to the game to make it a little bit more better. A little bit more better? Wow, Sam, that's great English. <laughs> a little bit better. You already know what I mean. So let's get started. But if you want to skip to the vehicle popularity list, just click the button. If you want to skip to the potential new mechanics and some of the mechanics that could work, but it's not going to happen. So we'll talk about it coming right up. But we'll start with the recent patch history. So as you can see, there were a lot of stuff that happened in a span of about three to four years. So a lot of vehicles were added. But there is a significant divergence, a era of change, starting with patch 9.0. So this is the dividing line, and I'll talk about it. But before 9.0, a lot of the vehicles, a lot of the normal vehicles were added. So in a span of about one and a half year, a lot of the normal vehicles were added to the game such as the second Russian tank destroyer branch with object 263, British mediums, heavies, American light tank branch with a T-57 heavy, Chinese mediums, heavies, British tank destroyer branch, German Leopard 1s branch, sporadic artilleries, British artillery, Russian second medium tank branch with the object 140, German tank destroyer, second tank destroyer branch with the Waffen triggers, the Japanese, and then dropped off. So this is the era of change. Afterwards, we didn't get as many branches of normal vehicles. So when we only got the second American light tank branch, the British second tank destroyer branch, a mini branch for the AMX 30B, the Japanese heavies, and then the new nations, the Czechs and the Swedes coming this year. So for this year, not that many content in new tanks per se. We got a very big patch surrounding the physics and audio. So for this year, it's mostly fixes or mostly revamps of previous system, not new tanks. Whereas before 9.0, we got a butt ton of tanks, a lot of tanks and not that many premiums. Whereas for the post 9.0 era or 9.0 era, we got a lot of premium tanks and not that many or at least the same amount of normal tanks compared to the previous post or pre 9.0 era. So pre 9.0 and post 9.0 is dramatically different. So what's the difference between these two era, which is the high deafness, high deafness, high definition of the tank models. So starting with patch 9.0, Wargaming shifted to high def. So from standard def with the historical battle mode. And with this mode, a lot of the vehicles were converted and needs more resource. So therefore the developers, the designers needs more time with the models. And that's why we don't see that many normal tanks. So that's why there's a lot more premium tanks to fund the wages and salaries of the employees to make the tank models, right? So as expected, but here you can see different summaries of the patches and how the meta shifted. So pre 9.0, it was artillery meta. So I started playing around patch 8.3 or 8.4, but in patch 8.6, this was the gigantic artillery nerf. So super nerf to the artilleries and they were not as accurate takes longer to reload, a lot slower, so 
That's the end of the artillery era, and then became the tank destroyer era with the Waffentragers, and how tank destroyers get more camouflage based on the new system of trees giving camouflage when knocked down, as well as bushes. So, tank destroyers doesn't lose camouflage rating when shooting in camo. So, they nerfed the system, obviously, and tank destroyer meta were shifted out in place of medium tank meta. So, you can see the meta change based on the patch difference. So, I like to analyze different stuff. A lot of the stuff could be predicted. So, based on the current trend, the sandbox was a fail, in my honest opinion. So, they want to shift into heavy tank meta from medium tank meta, but that did not work out. So, it's still the medium tank era. But, here you can see the summary of the different patches. So, we would expect a lot of medium tanks to be popular in the vehicle popularity list. But, that's not the case. So, let's take a quick look. So, here is the top 100 most popular tanks based on VB Attic stats gathered from 1.4 million public random games of the last 30 days with 42 million tanks participated, so a bunch of stats. Now, I am basing, disclaimer, I am basing interests and popularity rating with the number of uh, battles played, because that's most logical, right? Because why would you play a vehicle you don't like a lot of the time, unless you're botting? So, yeah, unless you're a masochist, unless you're terribly grinding a vehicle, you would not play a tank if you don't like it. So here are the 100 most popular tanks in World of Tanks. So the first one is obviously the IS-3, <laughs> Russian bias. But this page will also answer an important age old question. Is there Russian bias in the game? So you can take a quick look of the 100 most popular tanks in World of Tanks. So pause the video if you want. So there are a lot of vehicles, a lot of the normal OP vehicles. So like the T-110E5, the KV-1s, yada yada yada, the Scorpion G, surprisingly, but that just got released, very surprisingly. So here are some of the key points. So a lot of the favorite vehicles belong to tier 8. So tier 8 is the golden tier for the most played games. And it's mostly due to the premium tanks, as well as the iconic IS-3, and the Rom Borzig, and some of the light tanks like T-49, AMX-1390, all tier 8. So very popular. The most played class is heavy tanks, rather than mediums. Surprisingly, right? Because more dedication per each entry. So dedication is the amount of battles per played of the single entry in the top 100 most played popular list. So, yeah, a lot more players play the heavy tanks. And the heavy tanks are more placed on the higher parts of the list, if that makes sense for you. So you can take a look at the spreadsheet, but the most popular is Tier 8 and Tier 8 Heavy Tanks, mostly. Medium Tanks comes in next in the popularity list. And Tier 6 for the tiers. So the most played nation is Germans, not Russians. Surprisingly, huh? Germans have more played battles for the different vehicles in the list. Then comes the Americans, surprisingly. And then comes the Russians. Now, you would think that Russian bias means the Russian tanks are very good. So a lot of players will play Russian tanks. It's, a, it's close to RU, it's close to EU. And a lot of people in those cultures love tanks. So they will play tanks close to their nation, which is mostly Russian tanks, right? But not really the case. They play a lot of German tanks and American tanks. Now, it's from all the servers, so it's average across the board. But 
based on the average, German vehicles are the most popular. So Russian buyers, maybe, but the stats doesn't show it surprisingly. And here you can see the most popular vehicles and the least popular vehicles based on the tiers and based on the types. So, yep, the least popular tier 10 is the type five. Now we exclude all the premium and the special vehicles because they are hard to get and does require money, some of the cases. So here are all the normal vehicles. That's the most popular or least popular. So the type five, the FE 4005, ooh, and the AMX 30B. So not that surprising, but this is getting heavily buffed. So hopefully it does perform a little bit better. We have the AMX 50 Fosh, the SU 12254, and the Conway in tier nine. The most popular tier 10 is the Grill 15. Now it could be the residual stats from the Waffen trigger off E100, but it's from the last 30 days. And we shifted from the grill in you know, like two patches. So it's been played a lot. So despite what you say about this vehicle, despite how you would think about this tank, some people think the stapler is not that good because crappy camouflage, the gun doesn't have penetration and the armor is crap, but it's one of the most played vehicles out of all the servers averaged. Surprisingly, it's crazy. Tier 9 is T10, They're coming from the IS-3 obviously, then the IS-3 at Tier 8 for the least popular vehicles, the AMX Tank Destroyer, the T-34-2, and the SU-101, yeah, the Bulldog, Rain Supreme, then the Cromwell, T-67, I think KV-1 is next, but yeah, these are very good vehicles based on their strengths and the squashiness, squashiness of other players. So very powerful vehicles. And for these vehicles, the AMX Tier 7, Tank Destroyer, AT7, A44, ugh. Oh, the Churchill Gun Carrier, ugh. not the Churchill Gun Carrier. It is the Churchill, I'm thinking about the Conqueror Gun Carrier. Wow, this thing is not that popular. <laughs> and the Achilles, the ARL V39, oh boy. The Archer, backwards, uh, Valentine with a 17 pounder, yeah. Yeah, the Renault G1, the G1R, and the Sherman 3. So, yep, one more one. The most popular light tank is the Bulldog. The least popular is the T21, which is a medium tank. Close to a medium tank, quote unquote. Then the 59 minus 16, yeah. The penetration does suck of the auto loading 57 millimeter. It could be better, but it could fit a gun rammer to the auto loader, so it's a special case. Then the small leopard, ooh, yeah, doesn't need to get buffed. Yeah. The Cromwell is the most popular, IS-3, Grill 15, and surprisingly, American Artillery, the T-53 slash 55. And a lot of people like this because the large angle of the gun arc, the high alpha splash radius, and the reload is slightly better than the T-92. So yeah, I could see why this is popular. And then the bunch of non-popular <laughs> vehicles, the Type 5, the mouse, the BDR, oh, the BDR G1B, oh God, this thing. Yeah, so you can you can read the list. And finally, here is the def definition of which nation is the most popular out of all the vehicles in the nation. So what I mean by this chart is the number of vehicles in that nation right here and amount of attention paid, amount of battles pay, played averaged across all the vehicles in the whole tech tree. So if a nation is very popular with all the vehicles, then it gets played per vehicle quite more than any other nation or any other vehicle, right? So the higher the bar, the more played these vehicles are. So as you can see, the Swedes are getting played with the STRV M4257 a lot more than the Czech, the Czechs right now. So the Czechs are still popular, but 
not as crazy as the Swedes with the first premium tier 6, but surprisingly, American comes in third. So, a lot more players are more interested in American vehicles across the board than vehicles from the Germans or the Russians. Surprisingly, right? But you can take away from all this list. So it's basically analyzing based on number of battles played rather than any other stats. Because I'm judging, disclaimer, interests is being substituted or represented by number of battles played. So that's why I take away from it. And finally, let's finish up. We're talking about potential new mechanics that could be added to the game. So I could only think of these mechanics, but there may be more. So yeah, here are some of the common mechanics for armor fighting vehicles or armor warfare. Not the game, with actual armor warfare. So about wheeled vehicles, wheeled combat vehicles. So these are the cars, if you will, with the tires. Now we just saw the Lanchester 4x2 armor car. And this system of the wheels is in the game. So it is demonstrated by the Lanchester and we could have stuff like the M8 Greyhound, the SD, KFZ, a bunch of other stuff. So that's the Germans with the armored cars. They could have around a 50 millimeter gun, I believe, and a 75, mm, 75 millimeter howitzer. That's the short barrel on the Panzer III's and Panzer IV's. But it's mostly for medium tiers to low tiers. There's no high tier armored cars unless you want to go with you know modern quote-unquote modern cars like the fe 721 fox or the ferret i forgot the name of the ferret the actual designation but those vehicles have high caliber auto cannons and we'll talk about the guns coming right up but yeah they're not possibly balanced depending on the weapon system so if they could have the auto-loading guns, it destroys vehicles without armor. So you think you have the health? Nope, you just get bursted down. That's, yeah. So balancing issue is important, but if you are going to introduce the cars, it's mostly likely going to be low tiers. So like tier two, tier three, tier fours. And you could play with those, but not that many people play with those low tier games. So that sucks. Now you have the AFEs and the IFEs, so the armor fighting vehicles and the infantry fighting vehicles. Infantry fighting vehicles are just armor fighting vehicles with troop compartments for infantry, and that's pretty much it. But these are basically lightly armored vehicles, like light tanks. So depending on weapon system, again, we could see a few of these vehicles, like the PT-76, which has a 76mm, right? Yeah, it's a PT-76. <laughs> It's a uh, rifled 76 millimeter with high explosive rounds. And yeah, it's, it, it's amphibious. So interesting. It's better amphibious than the STRV 103B. But yeah, could we see the PT 76? We could very likely, but it depends on the matchmaking of high tier light tanks. So is it going to be another tier eight? Is it going to be a medium tank or tier nine light tank? Who knows, but Wargaming has to fix the light tank scenario matchmaking before they introduce high tier low armored vehicles. So depending on weapon system, depending on how they would fire the weapon system, auto cannons will break the game. We'll talk about it coming right up. Or missiles, so missiles breaks the game. <laughs> but yeah, you could have a <laughs> Mark 19 grenade launcher from the M113, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Spamming high explosive uh, 40 millimeter grenades and stuff. That would be hilarious. That would be funny. New tube. But yeah, depending on weapon system, we could see a few of these vehicles, depending on weapon system. Now about half tracks. Half tracks are vehicles with tracks and tires. The tires help turn, whereas the tracks helps with the terrain. So half and half. But there were not that many wartime or World War II era half-tracks with anti-tank capabilities because most of these half-tracks were designed as troop transport or 
aircraft capabilities. So if you want to have a tank gun, it's normally mounted onto a tank or just by itself because with a half track, it's huge. And the tanks would spot your vehicle with the half track and you just become cannon fodder. So not that optimum, but there are a few anti-tank half track such as the M3 GMC, there's a howitzer version, artillery version, the T19 HMC, howitzer mortar carriage. There are the uh, German versions, uh, Lecter, Kraftwagen, wagon, sure. <laughs> but they are similar to fast tank destroyers with no armor, but no camo as well because they're bigger than stuff like the T67. So it's less possible to be implemented than the wheeled vehicles, but it's not out of the question. So there are not that many candidates, but still could happen. So let's talk about the weapons. As for grenade launchers, well, it's basically new tubes for tanks. So not that effective against armor, but it's effective against vehicles without armor. So like the Waffentragers, obviously, but with lower range, wider arc or less alpha, and less splash than artillery shells. So basically you're spamming and lobbing multiple high explosive rounds. And this is not difficult to base or code into the system. So it's relatively easy. Now the Mark 19 grenade launcher that you saw in modern day combat, it was prototyped in 1966. So technically it does fit into the game, but the 1966 version is not stable. So you can do a 1970s version, whatever. But it's very devastating to vehicles without armor. So it's very unlikely that this weapon system will be implemented. So I highly doubt you get to see grenade launchers being used against light tanks like the Chafee. <laughs> YouTube. All right, let's talk about auto cannons. So auto cannons are pretty much the same thing. So most modern day auto cannons are 20 millimeter to 30 millimeter auto cannons. There is the Bofors 40 millimeter auto cannon, but that's that's for anti aircraft purpose. So it's auto loading. It's a clip, usually about 10 rounds to 30 ish rounds. So it does take time, but there are a few large caliber machine guns as well. So they could act as auto loading cannons. So the famous example of large caliber uh, machine guns is the Russian KPVT. So that's the machine gun that's on a lot of the high tier Russian vehicles like the Object 140, the IS-7. What else has this gun? The 430 also has it. T-62A does not have a hatch with a machine gun on it. Oh, there's a lot of stuff, but it's the large machine gun on the IS-7 which is used for aircraft, against aircraft. It's also used against like lowly armored, poor armored vehicles like trucks or anti-personnel carrier thingamajig. So yeah, you could have it, but it's very devastating, super devastating to low armor targets. So it's very unlikely that this will be implemented because if you're facing stuff like a Waffentrager, you just melt them in mere seconds <laughs> by shooting the gun shield with large caliber machine guns. You just penetrate them all the time and they get super dead <laughs> in a matter of seconds. As for rockets, uh, anti-tank missiles, anti-tank guided missiles, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so it's like the, uh, yeah, it's like the uh, War Thunders M4, T-34, yeah, the, the, the rocket spam, no. <laughs> Golly, nope. Uh, Cal Calliope is very OP in War Thunder when it was introduced. I don't know how they buffed it in the meantime since I watched the initial video, but it, oh God, it was a nightmare. 60 of, was it? Uh, 70 millimeter or, 60 mil or 50 millimeter rockets. There were a bunch of them. Hey, I, I wrote this down, but. 114 millimeter? Holy crap, there were 60 114 millimeter rockets for the 
the tray of death. So yeah, nope. <laughs> Unless Wargaming implements uh, space armor or composite armor, this is not going to work. You're you're basically pay to win, or pay to break break the crap of the game. So no rockets, no. Just, no. Based on the meta, you, you will break the meta. All right, multi coaxial gun support. So some of the tanks in the game has different coaxial guns. So a lot of the guns are, you know, 70, 70 millimeter, 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine guns. So that's the usual, but some tanks have larger auto cannons, like the Panzer 58 Mutz, which has a 20 millimeter auto cannon. And it's a little bit more devastating to Waffendragers, obviously, than a 50 caliber. And the mouse has a 75 millimeter coaxial gun which could be used to help supplement the 128. So it could be beneficial to have multi-gun support, multi-coaxial gun support, but it's better for detracking for smaller guns, devastation to low armor targets because the firepower boost, so you get better DPM. It's possible, but not many candidates of the World War II era vehicles, which has decent coaxial guns for tank and to tank purposes. So it's questionable, but not out of the circumstances. So, yeah, okay. As for multi turret support, uh, oh. I mean, World of Warships has it. And yeah, it's been talked about for a long time. So it's, it's possible, but it's not on the main menu. So it's not coming right up. It's in the far future, way far future. We've been asking about this for a long time. So stuff like the M3 Lee, the Japanese heavy tanks, various pre-World War II designs from the Russians or the French would benefit from multi-turret support, but it doesn't look like we're having it pretty soon. So impact on the meta, uh, questionable. So I'll put a question mark, boink, but it's not going to happen in the meantime. As for mines and area denial, I would love to see it. I thought about it. There are a few mine launchers developed in World War II, which just lobs a mine across a field. And if you step on it, you blow up. But area denial is a strategy, is a very important part of the strategy. So this is basically camper's delight. <laughs> so basically placing a claymore for yourself while you're sniping to prevent yourself from being flanked. So if you drop a mine right next to a vehicle, you, yeah, you should not circle straight. <laughs> it would be a lot funnier to watch how other players would react with your claymores or with your mines. But it's very difficult to code the environmental objects onto the map. So coding is very difficult. And this is highly unlikely going to happen, but it's very fun. So you can deploy tank traps, you can deploy mines next to your vehicle to prevent yourself from being flanked and that would just basically break or make heavy tanks super OP against light tanks or mediums. <laughs> but that's not gonna happen. As for composite armor, unless you're going to introduce super high penetration, high explosive anti-tank shells or any other high penetration AP shells, not really, this is too modern. It's mostly designed for uh, high penetration APCR shells and AP fin stabilized discarding sables other stuff. So two advanced armor warfare. Now, in order to realistically model composite armor, you need the actual stats of the armor, which is class classified for modern day tanks because they're still in use. You cannot go measure a composite armor like the Chobum armor of the Challenger tanks because you'll get shot. <laughs> It's classified. There's no way of you to analyze stuff like this. So for armor warfare, it's just a numerical modifier for different tanks. It's just a number. So basically, if you get shot at by high explosive anti-tank shell, it just increases the armor by a little bit with a number multiplied to the actual armor thickness. So it's a numerical factor. But if you want to realistically model this thing, it's super difficult for the math and the physics. So coming from an engineer major, yeah, it's super hard. Same goes for the reactive armor. Reactive armor is not the same layer of different stuff. It's basically exploding when getting hit. So either exploding or just increasing in size when getting hit. 
So also it's very difficult to modify or model this reactive armor, non-explosive or explosive version. There's also a electrical version that's coming out or being tested. So it's too modern, not going to happen. End of discussion, whatever. As for cage armor or slat armor, you already saw on the STRV 103B, that's a cage armor at the front, but it's mostly for high explosive anti tank shell or shaped charges, but not really for AP shells. Whereas for the STRV 103B, that's modeled as space armor, where in reality, cage armor is mostly useless against AP shells because they have holes in them rather than, you know, a, a slab of sheet metal like the Panzer IV uh, H uh, side skirts. So even though space armor is not as useful against AP shells, it's a little bit better than, you know, just holes of the cage armor. So it depends on what Wargaming feels like doing. So I doubt it, but hey, they may put some cage armor on Centurions in the rear of the turret or the engine block if they feel like it or on the chieftain that would be great but it's up to designer perspective because this is just based off a slab of space armor and that's pretty much it all right smoke grenades and miscellaneous topics so smoke grenades are interesting they're actually very beneficial to cover so this will increase survivability of different vehicles with it like heavy tanks, medium tanks. Smoke is one of the most interesting aspects or technical aspects that's super simplistic because it's basically throwing a smoke grenade that covers up a visual designation of your targets. So it could be used offensively or defensively. A lot of players use it defensively because it's normal, right? You just put down smoke and you run away. So that's natural like squids or ink, so smoke screen, and you run away. But you can also use it offensively. And I used it in stuff like shooting games for FPS. So what would you do with smoke grenades is you can actually block your opponents seeing you coming <laughs> with smoke grenades. And you go up them and you knife them. <laughs> so that's offensive use of smoke grenades. But if we have it, it's a very simplistic coding of the smoke grenades. Now, it also depends on your computer specs. So also uh, one of the conditions for Wargaming is that they would not like uh, stuff to slow down their computers. So smoke grenade is one of those. And if everybody discharge smoke at the same time, <laughs> that would be funny, but I like to see smoke. It's not hard to implement and it could work. I mean, it could really work. So we'll see. Also, there's not just smoke grenades. You can increase or you can just create a smoke screen by injecting diesel onto the hot exhaust pipes of your engine. So a lot of the modern day tanks like the Challenger 2, the Russian T-80s, they can just put diesel onto the hot exhaust pipes to create a smoke screen right from the engine block. So you can see right here, but very interesting, right? So tactics does help you to escape or offensively use smoke screens. Also amphibious capabilities. So with the STRV 103B, it's one of the most, eh, not really amphibious vehicles, but it does work, but it is the first amphibious vehicles or amphibious vehicle for World of Tanks. So it does have a shower curtain requirement to be amphibious but if you're going to introduce stuff like the PT-76 or the M551 Sheridan, Sheridan yeah it could work the BMPs the BMDs if you figure out how to do high tier lights then sure you can do amphibious capabilities because most of these vehicles in water do not move that fast they move about five kilometers per hour at best so not that fast so you're basically a sitting duck in the water. You could spot with in the water capabilities. That would be funny, but it's not that effective to fight from the water. So hmm, who knows? And lastly, I want to talk about the weather effects and the night conditions. So you saw this 
This was demonstrated on the console version for World of Tanks. They have mud, they have snow, and they will gather or accumulate on vehicles if they stand still or travel through the mud, which is basically amazing to look at. And it has camouflage bonus if you stand still for a long time when the snow covers you. Holy crap, that's amazing. But due to the PC limitations, so it wasn't implemented onto the PC version. I really wish this is on the on the PC. It's not impossible, guys, but still, come on. So weather effects are highly likely to be the next mechanic to be implemented or some sort of wheeled vehicle. But you're not going to see special uh, dual weapon build uh, super armor fighting vehicle because they just breaks the game against low armor targets. I mean, they're useless against highly armored vehicles like the mouse or the Type 5, but against stuff like the Hellcat, against stuff like the Waffentragers, you just chew the crap, uh, just destroy them, just rip a new asshole. So here are two clips of the AFVs in Armor Warfare, and you can just see how dual coaxial gun support or multi-turret uh, multi support, what kind of break the world of tank aspect because the firepower is just sheer overwhelming so you can take a look at the clip but as for the general overall overall values of different patches or mechanics implemented we can see that world of tanks is going towards a multinational cookie cutter normal tanks route rather than crazy new mechanics route with different new mechanics per patch so Wargaming is, go to, is going the safe route of adding just normal tanks. So tanks with tracks or a single turret with a single shot or multi-shots, but not that many. So just the normal, conventional, blatant, you know, standard tanks, whatever. So not the crazy tanks with multi-turrets or super firepower like the Terminator 2, which, by the way, is one of my favorite tanks in Armor Warfare now because the sheer firepower of that goddamn thing twin 30 millimeter auto cannons with 430 millimeter ATGMs launchers. It has the reactive armor, the ERAs and the applicant armor from a T-72 and has like 20 horsepower per ton ratio with 60 kilometers per hour top speed. <laughs> Fucking broken, just disgustingly OP. But yeah, as for the likelihood of upcoming mechanics, it's likely going to be the wheel vehicles or maybe the weather system, but uh, what could we ask for? So that's the normal gist of it. So there you go, folks. The quick overview of all the stuff. So the status quo for World of Tanks. So we're getting ready for the Swedes with the Hydro Pneumatic System. So that's interesting, but not crazy. But that's the likely outcome. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.